We're sitting in a new, brand new car for Rolls Royce, uh, the new Phantom. Tell me about this car exactly. That is Phantom Series 2. It is uh, the Phantom uh, we have, let's say, launched for the very first time in 2017. And uh, it carries now, I call it, some lovely embellishments in a way of we couldn't resist to improve the perfection to even uh, higher levels. And uh, for that reason, it's the Phantom Series 2 and uh, had his uh, North American debut yesterday at Quail. Very much liked and loved by our clients because it is for me and also for our client the perfect canvas yeah, for Bespoke. I mean it's the only Rolls Royce that carries in front the gallery where you can put pieces of art behind, where you can leave your own creativity, full room, whatever you want to do, put it behind the gallery and it is then an even more personalized Bespoke Phantom and carries your signature sort of. You know, you've been at the helm for a long time at Rolls Royce, sort of transforming yeah. the brand from where it was maybe 10 years ago, I say, I would say, and then into where it is now. I was at the Quail yesterday. I saw the enthusiasm with the clients there at, at your at your stand. I also want to I want to I want to say that I saw that it was the most diverse clientele I've ever mm. seen at any of the mm. uh, stands at at Rolls Royce. I think, or I'm sorry, at the, at the Quail. And I think it's a testament to where the brand is now getting younger, more diverse clientele. How did you end up doing that? Um, many things we did, obviously. When I uh, joined Rosros Motorcars over 12 years ago, I talked to quite a lot of private banks worldwide. And there was one prediction that ultra high net worth individuals would get younger, would get far more casual, uh, informal, relaxed. Uh, it was also seen that the way how people would earn money is far easier mm. than it might have been years before. So message to me was get prepared for a very changing demographic and for a very changing client behavior in the, within the ultra high net worth individuals. So what we did is we changed the brand on the one side from being formally very much a chauffeur's brand. 80% of clients enjoyed being chauffeured and 20% self-driven into exactly the opposite. It's today 80% self-driven and 20% chauffeured. Really? Only 20% yeah, really. chauffeured? Wow. Only 20% wow. chauffeured. Wow clients enjoy being behind the wheel. We've introduced brilliant product with Wraith, with Dawn, uh, uh, with Black Badge for instance and uh, we have done some very creative stuff uh, in the way how we launch uh, cars. Cullinan played an important role obviously. The new Phantom is a very different Phantom from what the Phantom 7 used to be. So and I think that all together including also our bespoke activities because bespoke I think is so important for us in the meantime and we have invested years ago already heavy into bespoke capabilities in uh, Goodwood so that it's not a marketing bluff when I say uh, your imagination is our limit. It, uh, it is definitely true. Whatever you commission, we're going to build it for you. Nobody wants luxury just from the shelf. You want to do something where you put your own signature on and where you create you are masterpiece of art. And that is particularly appealing with the younger ones. Many are, let's say, celebrities and uh, they want to have something very, very special, something that expresses their personality. Yeah? And uh, we have been prepared for that. And uh, I think that is now a big, big benefit that we are sitting on such an expertise when it comes to craftspeople, what they can do. And I'm very glad that we have invested heavily into Bespoke. So I would say probably also a very important part in that story of rejuvenating the brand. Yeah, you know, you talk about this, the brand DNA. Bespoke was here for many, many years uh, with Rolls Royce and sort of that's even more so now with, the, with the younger people wanting to have put their mark on a car. You know, that magic sauce of, of black badge, the Cullinan in perhaps and heavy customizations made the brand sort of really, really uh, yeah. sought right. after, right, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I was just thinking about how you had a really great 2021. I imagine 2022 is, is lining up just as well. Yeah. Are there any concerns with, you know, the economic uncertainty, you know, component shortages, that sort of thing for you guys? I mean, on the component side, I'm not so much worried. You might know that we are part of the BMW group and uh, we are well, let's say, served with all microchips we're going to need. And I think we haven't lost a single car yet based on that general shortage issue that uh, the automotive industry sees worldwide. The other thing is uh, the economic outlook, uh, the uncertainty in particular in Europe with uh, the war in Ukraine and uh, 
so far, Prash, we haven't seen any, let's say, impact. So mm. no declines when it came to orders. Uh, our order bank is very strong. And if you order today, you probably take delivery Christmas next year. And mm. uh, so it is seriously uh, uh, interesting. And it is, I must say, also quite interesting because formerly, years before, when we had a kind of recession or when it was a little bit more difficult, you could see that as well also with luxury goods. But this is currently not the case. And it's not only Rolls Royce, it's with all luxury goods. It's with watches, jewelry, whatever you say, fashion. They all currently experience quite a boom. What might be one reason, and uh, we are very client focused listening to our clients, is that particular after the pandemic, people thought you only live once and you better live now. And uh, there is that kind of appetite to enjoy life. And uh, I think enjoying life is for very affluent people also to do something special and to afford something that pleases your soul and is, yeah, and is great to own. We've been hearing a lot of people, we talk to business leaders and things like that, talk about how the money is great, but if you don't do anything with it, what's the point, right? So um, looking ahead for Rolls Royce uh, and see where the money goes, actually. I know I've been bugging you guys a lot about this. The Spectre is coming. It's on its way. It's, it's I believe, in doing some validation and testing right now. Yeah. What Can you tell us about the progress there with that really highly sought after sort of uh, all eyes on that model? Yeah, uh, I'm very satisfied with the progress so far. We are now around 50% of the testing program is finished. Uh, I think we have put to the car one of the most extensive testing programs ever conceived for Rolls Royce for good reasons, because we want to make sure it's the very first electric Rolls Royce. And uh, my promise and also uh, the demand by clients was it needs to be a Rolls Royce first and then second an electric car. And that is exactly what will happen and we will deliver that. And uh, out of what I've experienced so far, I'm very pleased uh, how the car behaves, how it drives. And it is a true Rolls Royce. Yeah? It feels lovely and uh, <laughs> it is marvelous to be, let's say, wafted and uh, the magic carpet ride of our today's Rolls Royces, but I can tell you Spectre is even, I wouldn't call it better, is different and uh, very compelling in a way how it feels and how it drives.